everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with a very special Contrast Plus painting tutorial because today we are painting the Avatar of Cain. Yes. Hey. <laughs> what an absolutely fantastic model. As we seem to say quite often on these videos, he has had a hell of a glow up. This new version is fantastic and well, I'm very excited to jump in and start painting for him for you today. So, Without further ado, we're going to start doing that. He's been primed in Wraithbone. And the reason we've gone for Wraithbone is because, well, we want him to have a nice kind of warm texture to him. We are going to be able to take some of that warmth out with some of the things I've got planned for you. But we want to have this kind of warm base from which to start where we can cool things down rather than having to warm things up from a grey sear or even a white base. And that's the reason why we're doing it this way. So. He's been primed in Wraithbone, and the first colour we're going to be using is Eandon Yellow. And we're going to be using Eandon Yellow on the body. Now, a lot of these techniques will be being used on various different parts of him. For example, on the sword and the flames, for example. But we're going to take this very steady. We're going to start with the body, legs, for example. All of his kind of fiery molten flesh. And then we're going to move on to the next areas after that. So... Without further ado, we're going to grab some Eandon Yellow. And with this Eandon Yellow, what we're going to do is we're just going to start painting this using a small layer brush into the recesses of his body. Just like this. Nice and simple. Don't have to be 100% neat here. The one thing to watch out for is having too much on your brush at once. Because we want this to have this kind of nice look, yellow texture to it, a yellow tone to it, rather than kind of the deep orange that you can sometimes get if you have too much paint on your brush with the and and yellow. And when you're doing this stage, don't forget to do the legs and his arm. And if you've gone for one of the bear heads, you'll also need to do some of this on the forehead as well, around there. But for now, on this iteration of the avatar, You don't have to go anywhere near the face. You just want to get this into every crack in his body. So with that Eandon yellow applied all the way around, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to create a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Griffhound orange mix. And we're basically gonna use this to glaze over all of the rest of his flesh and also just run this a little bit into some of those recesses. So for example, just up here on the chest, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this all over that muscle and that muscle there, like that. And then we're also just going to let it run into a couple of those recesses like that as you can see it's already starting to create a really nice kind of glow effect Just like this. Don't worry, it is going to get darker, so it might look a little bit weird at the moment, but it's going to be all right. So with that Griffhound orange all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to darken it right down. It's going to get super, super dark now. <laughs> And well, the color we're gonna be using is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Flesh Terra's Red and Shahish Purple. But what I've done is I've taken three brushfuls of Flesh Terra's Red, 
three brushfuls of shyish purple and then just a little bit of contrast medium in there as well so it's technically a one to one with a bit of that but it's actually a three to three to one makes sense <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to grab this on our brush and now what we're going to do is we're going to paint this over the top of the flats of all of his muscles just like this and the more of them you paint the better it'll look So with that done, you should have some pretty awesome looking avatar skin already with that burning right down there in the deep, deep recesses. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna darken it down just that one step further. The color we're gonna make is roughly three parts contrast medium to one part black templar. And what we wanna do is we wanna take small amounts on this of our, on our brush at a time. And we're just gonna build this up over the flats where we've just added too much paint. Just like this. This is much narrower. This is almost like a kind of highlight in a way. looking for some of that flesh terror's red and shayish purple mix to kind of still be shining through. You don't have to cover every single muscle as well. Give it a little bit of Variation. And we just want to go around like this, just adding that little bit of extra depth. So we'll just this leg just here. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we are gonna move on and paint in a few of the extra base coats. We're not gonna be doing any highlights or anything just yet. We wanna get more of a feel for the model. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and paint the armor. And the color we're gonna be making is a roughly two parts flesh terrors red to one part shayish purple. It's got a little bit more red in it than we did on the skin. And well, what we're gonna do is just gonna take this on our brush. I'm gonna pick a place to start. And as you can see, I've already done the back of this foot just here. I'm going to start just down here. I'm just going to start painting this all over all of his red armor plates. Just like this. So with that done, you should have an avatar that looks somewhat like this. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to brighten up those armor plates just a tad. And the color we're gonna make is a roughly two parts corn red to one part Mephiston red. So that's two brushfuls of corn red to one part brushful of Mephiston red. We thin it down with a little bit of water. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this mix and on our flats of our panels, so we'll look at this foot just down here. What we're going to do is we're just going to paint this over the top just 
like this. And the reason we're doing this is one, it's just that little smidge brighter than the layer we've just applied. But also, when it comes to doing all of the trim, should we make any mistakes at all? It's much easier to just recover them slightly. So with that done, again, we're not gonna be doing the highlights on it just yet. I'm gonna be leaving that till later on. What we're gonna do now is gonna move on to one of the other main features of the model, and that is these three sets of flames. Now, the three colors we're gonna be using for this are Yandan Yellow, Griffhound Orange, and Black Temper. I'm gonna be using them all at the same time. Now, the first color we're gonna be using is Yandan Yellow. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna load up our brush with the Yandan Yellow, and we're just gonna start painting it all over our flames. So I'm gonna start with this one just down here on the leg, like this. We don't need to worry about having too much on our brush here. So we're really just wanting to load it up all over this particular detail, just like that. Then what we do is wash the brush, grab some Griffhound Orange, and then around about the halfway mark, we're gonna add that in, like so. Then we're gonna wash the brush. Just mop up that little bit of excess just there. It was a little bit too much there. Wash the brush, grab some Black Templar, and then around about a third of these flames. I'm just gonna add it in. Just like that. Then we're gonna go back to Yand and Yellow. I'm just gonna use that to smooth out those blends and transitions. Just a little bit, just to really move all those colors together. Grab a little bit more Black Templar here. Gonna grab a little bit more Griffhound Orange. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Basilicanum Gray and we're gonna use this for our very few black details. Now, the majority of these are the straps that are kind of all the way around. Now, don't worry if you've got red or orange or yellow on any of these. This silicon and gray is going to sort of not cover over it, but it is going to prep the field for when we put our black on, which is what color these are going to be, like so. like that. What we're also going to do is we're going to use this to paint in our hair. Now it's got a kind of black and white hairdo and really what we're going to be using this Basilicon and Gray for is kind of set, separating out our little sections. So we've got one here for example. got one that kind of comes underneath so it includes this strand just here but it also goes right the way down I'm looking at the box art as we do this it is this one here
like that. And then there's another one just on the other side as well, which by the looks of things is this section here, but I have to check the Games Workshop product photography for that. So do just have that website open in front of you to help you with making that choice as where to put those black details. So with that now done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. I'm going to apply this over the top of the Basilicanum Grey, just like that. And as you can see, it covers over very nicely. So with those black details now applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take some apothecary white. I'm going to apply this to his face, the remaining areas of the hair, and of course the large white tabard down the middle. So we're just going to start down here on the face. We just want to get this all over. Now, just like with the rest of the body, there is a glowing effect. It's got a fiery face as well as a fiery body. But we want to get this white on here first so that we don't have to try and shade around that. And so with that apothecary white applied to all three of those details, what we are now going to do is we're just going to very quickly take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to apply this to the dripping blood on this gauntlet just here. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Griffhound Orange and we're going to paint this over his eyes and in his mouth. I just want to take a small amount of this on the brush here. So with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to take some thin down Corax White. I'm going to use this on the sword blade. Now the reason for this is because we want the blade to be nice and bright, but also have a little bit more coolness in it because, well, it's not as warm as this kind of more organic fire. It's more kind of a manufactured fire in a sort of way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take that Corax White. We're just going to paint this over the blade. Now you could at this point, if you wanted to, use the Corax White to relayer all of our white details but I'm not going to do it just yet, I'm going to do it later. So that we can keep all the kind of highlights, sections together for the sake of flow in the video. But now we just want to get that blade nice and cold, just like that. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Rune Lord Brass. I'm going to apply this to, well, it's only a couple of areas. So firstly, what we've got is we've got the spikes coming off his armour. We want those to be Rune Lord Brass. So we've got the ones on the arms, both arms. Just... like this. And 
And then the other areas that we're going to apply this rune or brass to are this kind of section that we haven't done with any color yet on the helmet. Just there. Don't worry about getting it on the rune. Because whilst that is going to be white, we'll just be able to cover that up with some Gorax white later on when we're doing all the white details. So we've got that section there. We've also got the larger sections. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on that sword blade. Now the colour we're going to be using for this is Yandin Yellow. I've got my medium layer brush here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up the brush here. And basically, I'm going to make contact at the base. I'm just going to pull it all the way up and hopefully get it in one brush stroke. So just starting down here with the Yandin Yellow. And then pulling it all the way up. Just like that. I'm just going to fill in those gaps like that very carefully and one of the struggles with doing it this way with so many runes on the blade itself you just got to very very carefully then take just a little bit of yand and yellow and then just go back over those runes, just like that. There we go. Perfect. So, now we've done it on one side, we have to do it on the other. So with that done, we now want to start darkening down the blade. And well, we want to start adding these kind of, this blended effect that you can see all over the blade. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Griff Hound orange mix. Now, much like when we applied it the first time, we're going to go all over, but then what we're going to do is we're going to quickly wash the brush and then we're going to remove the parts that we don't want whilst it's still wet. So taking this Griff Hound orange mix on our brush, what we're going to do is we're just going to apply this again, starting down at the bottom. We're just going to go all the way up and put it all the way along the length of the sword. Then we're going to wash the brush and then very quickly down the middle, we're just going to mop up the Griff Hound Orange. Going up to around about there. Just like that, leaving some of that yellow. in the middle. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use that exact same mix again, two parts contrast medium to one part Griff Hound Orange. And this time, rather than going over the whole of the blade, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to keep to the edges. So we're gonna try again once to do this in as few brush strokes as possible. We just wanna come like that, coming down the edge. I'm going to wash the brush and then we're just going to mop up some of that excess to give us this really nice kind of blended effect towards the white hot section of the middle of the blade. And then we're going to do that again on the opposite side. A little too much paint there. that. 
wash the brush. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and gore grunter fur. I'm going to use this to add the darkest part of the blade. So what we're going to do is just at the top here, just going to effectively do kind of like a narrow edge highlight, or a wide edge highlight, I should say. Coming down to around about there like that. We're going to wash the brush. And then we're just going to smooth out that transition with a clean brush. Like that. I'm going to come along this edge as well. I'm going to come up from the bottom. Like that. Wash the brush. And then smooth it out. So with that now done, the sword, barring any highlights, is now pretty much finished. The blade looks amazing. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and we're gonna paint in our, well, what I think is our last base coat. And that is gonna be Retributor Armor. Now, this is gonna be for all of our remaining trim, the gems, pretty much everywhere that we haven't done any painting on. There is a lot of trim, so just take your time, move through it a section at a time. I'm just gonna start on the leg, and I'm gonna work my way up. The only thing that isn't gonna be gold is this rune on the head up there, which we've painted the Rune Lord brass around. The rest of it though, is all gonna be this color. So, that's a lot of gold. <laughs> that's a whole lot of gold, but it is all on there now. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a shade. And the color we're gonna be using is Dark Oath Flesh, and we're gonna be using this on all of our metallics. So this is both the Rune Lord Brass and the Retributor Armor as well. Nice and simple. Just wanna get this all over, just like this. So with that done, our avatar of Kane is now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. He already looks fantastic and well, he's well beyond a standard battle ready, but this is where you could leave it if you wanted to, not doing any highlights, but that's not what we do around here. We are of course gonna take him a little bit further. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of blending on the headdress up here. We're gonna be starting with some Castellax bronze. Now I've taken some Castellax bronze and I've added like four or five parts water to it. So it's nice and nice and runny and thin. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding this towards the base of the headdress. So we want to take it up to around about that one there. Like that, making sure that we've got it on there. Just like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're just gonna use the brush to mop up and move that Castellax bronze, bronze off the base of the headdress like that. So around about that halfway point. So once again, we'll do this on the other side.
like that, and then we're gonna use that clean brush just like that. So you see, we've got this almost fade going between the two. Now, don't worry, we're gonna be doing the top half in just a moment. So with that Castellax bronze applied, we're then going to take some thinned down Rune Lord brass. Again, like three or four parts water here. So it's nice and thin and runny. And what we're going to do, we're just going to apply this towards the top. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. I'm just going to... Smooth it out by just feathering away at where that transition happens, like so. So with that done, just to really reinforce that blend, what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And we're going to apply this over the area of the Castlax bronze and then we're going to feather it out as well. So we're going to grab that wildwood mix Gonna put this over the top here, coming up to that area just there. Take it onto the rune roll brush just a little bit. Wash the brush, and then with a clean brush, I'm gonna smooth out that transition just a touch, like that. So it goes right down into this nice shadowed area, just like that. Same again on the other side. So with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thins down Stormhost Silver. We're gonna use this to highlight all of our Rune Lord brass. So this is going to include the headdress that we've been blending on and the spikes on his armor as well. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on all of our gold, as there is an awful lot of it, and it's, well, quite a premier place that we're going to have to work on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Rune Lord brass. I'm going to apply this to a couple of areas. Now, these are going to be our really kind of wide open flat areas, and this will include areas such as the top knot that we want to get this all over. And we're just avoiding anywhere where the recesses uh, where any, anywhere where the shade is settled, like that, so it's nice and bright. We're going to be doing this on the hilt of the sword, just here. Like that, similarly again, just avoiding where the recess recesses are. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all of the gold, including those areas we just did with Rune Lord Brass, with a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Stormhost Silver and Retributor Armor. Now, you could just use Liberator Gold here, but this mix will give you a much shinier finish, and that's exactly what we're after, whereas Liber Liberator Gold isn't quite as shiny. And, well, this is just that tiny little bit brighter as well. So we're just going to get this over all of our edges, on all of our gold details. And this is probably gonna take you the longest. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna very quickly take some Stormhose Silver. I'm gonna use this as a little spot highlight 
on the sharpest points of all the gold. So for example, just here on the tip of the leg greave, like that. And the same just there, like this. Just creating a couple of little light points here and there at the tips of this little section. Just like that, just to make it look super shiny. So with all of our metallics done, the avatar has taken a massive leap forward, as I'm sure you can probably tell. He looks amazing, but we're still not done. <laughs> so the next place we're gonna work on is on all of the white details. And the color we're gonna be using for this is Corax White. Now, there is something to point out just here. The rune on his forehead, this one just here, is in fact, as mentioned before, going to be white. I want to be very careful here. You just want to paint this Corax white over the top. Just like this. I'm going to do that over the whole of that rune. And in addition, what we're going to do on areas such as our tabard is we're going to pick a place to start. I'm just going to start just down here. No, I'm not. I'm going to start here. We're going to relayer this Corax white all over, just avoiding where the apothecary white is really settled in the recesses. We're going to do the same thing on the hair as well. And so with that Corax white now applied to our hair and our cloak and our face, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down white scar. I'm going to use this to add a little bit of a spot highlight to areas such as the face. Just picking out the raised areas. sharpest lines on the cloak and with that the white details are now all finished so what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the black details now the color we're going to be using for this is dawnstone and well, just as we've done so far, we're just going to be picking out the edges on all of our black details. Now, this is going to include the black tips of the flames as well. So you just want to run a little bit of Dawnstone. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to move on to highlighting all of the flames. Now, the flame sword and these actual flames, they're going to have a slightly different highlighting structure. So for the sword, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Morgast bone. And we're going to use this to pick out the edges of the blade. What we want to do is we're just going to get that cutting edge. like this. And we also want to run this down the middle 
of the blade. Like that sort of thing. And so with that done, what we then do is we take some Screaming Skull. And we're gonna apply this as a little spot highlight to make it super sharp, just towards the top of the blade like that. A little bit towards the bottom. And then again, just going across that central reservation. Like that. And we do not have to do any more. That sword is now finished. <laughs> Still sticking with the Screaming Skull, just for the moment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a tiny amount of this on our brush. And we're gonna use this to add our kind of real glow to his eyes and to his mouth. And so what we do here is we just take that Screaming Skull and we just add a little dot of it right in the middle of the great Griff Hound Orange that we put on there all that time ago. Now in the mouth, we just want to add a little tiny highlight around the circle. So with that done, as promised, we are now going to work on the rest of the flames. Now, the color we're gonna be using first for this is Yuri or Yellow. And really what we're doing here is we're gonna put some very subtle yellow highlights going along the hottest parts of the flame. So this is where the orange and the yellow should be. And this can be used to kind of create some nice kind of transitions, add a little bit more yellow in if it's a little too orange for your taste, and also just really make those flames pop. You don't want to go too close to the black areas. Indeed, you don't want to cover the majority of your flames. You just want to add a little bit more warmth in there with this yellow, as you can see, like I'm doing here. And because it's a yellow paint, sometimes it can take a couple of passes. So just judge each one how you like. And so with that Yuri or yellow done, what we then do is take a tiny amount of phalanx yellow. And we use this towards the base of each of our little yellow highlights. Just like that. You don't want to do all of it. And this gives it the impression of it starting out really bright. Just like that. What we can also do with the phalanx yellow is take a tiny, tiny dot of it and in the deepest parts of the molten body. So for example, we've got one just here on the bottom. 
you're just going to add a little bit going down the middle like that just to make it look like that's a very bright point so for example just in here and a tiny little dot just really small amounts So with that done, it is now time to move on because all of our flames are now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thins down the fist and red. I'm going to use this to highlight all of his armor. Be nice and careful here. To get those smooth clean highlight lines like that there on the foot. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a tiny, tiny amount of Jacaro Orange. I'm going to apply this to the sharpest points on all of our armor. So for example, just there on the tip of his boot, the same going all the way up like that. It's a very, very subtle little tiny spot highlight. Just like that. We're just gonna go over all the areas that are particularly pointy. For example, it's going to look so with that done. We're still sticking with the Jacaro orange just for the moment because what we're going to do is we're going to now add a couple of tiny little spot highlights to his flesh. And well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of this on our brush and we're just going to pick out some of the hottest places. So for example, just around here, around his belly button. Just like this. We don't want this to be like a super consistent edge highlight. We're just picking out sort of little tiny patches. like this. So with that, the flesh and the armor are now finished and our avatar is so very, very close to being finished. We've just got a couple of things left to do. These include the gems and we're gonna do a little bit more work on this blood dripping down his gauntlet. We'll leave that just for now because we're gonna work on the gems now. There's two different colors of gems on here. We've got the sort of turquoisey, sort of tealy gems, and we've got the kind of pinkish gems as well. And well, we're gonna start on the pinkish ones. And the color that we're gonna be using is the lupus pink for this. Now there's not many. There's only one, two, three, four, five, five pink gems. Now one of them is this one here on his forehead. So we're just gonna paint this. Lupus pink over the top of our gold. Just like that. We've got the kind of four, the one closest to the wrist on both gauntlets. So there's the one here. And there's one here as well. And 
And then the last two are the ones on the hilt of the sword. So with that Volupus pink applied, now for the rest of the gems, and I mean the rest of them, and there's a lot, we're going to be using Achillean green. So we're just going to get some of this on our brush and we're just going to work our way up the model as we've done so many times before. So just starting down here on the ankle and then just working our way up. So with that done, as you can see, there are a ton of gems. So what we're going to do now is we're going to darken down our pink gems. I'm going to use a tiny bit of shyish purple here. Not very much at all. What we're looking to do is just basically cover over the top left corner of each of them, leaving some of that Volupus pink shining through towards the bottom right. Like that. And with that done, we're then gonna do the same thing across all of our blue gems with some Ultramarines blue. So what we're gonna do here on these big large ones Colour in that top left corner, leaving that little dot, the Achillean green, shining through. So with that done, what we're now going to do just on these large ones on the legs, so these three around here, these three around here, and the two on the ankles, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Black Templar. I'm going to add this as a little kind of sort of a, a shadow highlight, if you will. It's sort of like a highlight, but not really, because we're using Black Templar to just add a little bit more depth top left corners of all of these gems. So with that done, we can now highlight all the gems and we're gonna start with those blue ones. And the color we're gonna be using is Temple Guard Blue. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a tiny amount of this on our brush. I'm gonna very carefully highlight the bottom right corners. Of each of our blue gems. Actually didn't quite have enough paint on my brush that time. Just like that. So with that done, we're then going to take a teeny, tiny, tiny amount of Baharoth blue. And on just on these kind of much larger, more prominent ones, so we've got this gem just here, for example, and the ones on the legs, we're going to add a little tiny highlight. right at the bottom. Like that. Really, really small. So with that, our blue gems are pretty much nearly there. We've just got one thing left to do on them, but before we do it, we're just gonna get those pink gems to relatively a similar standard. And actually it's a lot simpler than the blue ones because we haven't got quite these massive gems that we have 
here on these legs. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab some Emperor's Children. Very tiny amount here. A little bit more than that. There we go. And we're just going to do much like we did with the pink, with the blue gems. Just going to add a little highlight. around the bottom right, just like that. And so with that done, we're then just gonna take a tiny dot of full grim pink. And just add it in the bottom right corner. So with that full grim pink applied, the last thing to do for all these gems is to take some tiny dots of Corax white. We're gonna add these in the opposite corner to where we've been doing all of those highlights. So for example, just here in the top left, just wanna add a tiny little dot, just like that. Really, really small. Do this across both the blue and the pink gems. So with that done, we're very nearly there. What we're going to do now though, is we're going to take some blood for the blood god. I'm going to use this on the blood, <laughs> funnily enough. So we're just going to run this down the drips. Just like this. Gives it a little bit more. Oomph. Plus it just looks really cool. We don't need to completely coat it, just. Add until you are happy with it. So with that blood for the blood god applied, what we can do now as a final flourish, and this is if you're feeling extra fancy, let's face it, you're painting the avatar, so you must be. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some art coat and thin it down with a little bit of water, just so it's a little bit extra runny. We're just gonna paint this over the top of our gems. And this will make them look extra shiny. So with that done, the avatar of Kane is now finished. Oh boy. <laughs> Look at this guy. However, there is still the base to do. And well, I've already covered how to do the flames on him. So, you know, we're just going to be doing that exactly the same way. Uh, for what I thought I would quickly cover is how to do the rock and then we're done. So the color we're gonna use is some Blood Angels Red, first and foremost, and what we're gonna do is we basically, much like when we started way back at the beginning, and this time with a different color, is we're just gonna fill these large cracks with the Blood Angels Red. Just like this. Now don't worry if you do overlap a little bit, if anything, it's somewhat encouraged. You don't want loads on your rush as you do this. So with that, 
Blood Angels red applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde. And we're going to paint this over the top with the runes on the ground. Going all the way around. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to create a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and basilicanum grey. We're going to use this to paint in all of the remaining stonework. So with that done, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've colored in the flames. Again, same style as when we did them on the avatar's body. And that's because there's only one thing left to do. We've got that kind of red, kind of creaking stonework all down. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna color in the negative space. Now, to do this, I'm gonna be using Wildwood, but of course you should use any color that is the best way to match up with your basing scheme because at this point, all that's left to do is to color in with the texture paint, which in this case is going to be Sterling Battlemire, and then to give it a dry brush and to finish off the rim. And of course, these parts are all entirely optional and entirely dependent on you. So I'm just going to do this all over this soil, and then I'm going to put some Sterling Battlemire down, and then I'm going to give the whole base a dry brush. Tyrant's gone. And then he's done. And so here we are at the end of the video with an absolutely breathtaking miniature. <laughs> it's really tough to know what to say about this guy. I ah, adored painting it. It just looks fantastic. It's amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful centerpiece for any Eldari army. You, uh, you have to have it. Eldari fans, you have to have it. And, well, when you do get it, I hope you find this video very useful in how to paint yours. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.